In this update, we will examine the outlook for stocks and risk assets in general from both a short and intermediate term perspective. We will begin by examining possible reversal points for the current rally by taking a tactical look at the charts of the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. We will update the current status of long-term bear signals and we'll close with some things to look for during a typical bear market rally. This is a daily chart of the S&P 500 as of the close on September 16th. This chart can help us answer the million dollar question which is from a probabilistic standpoint how high could the current rally go? This looks very very busy but it's easy to understand. Here's a trend line. These are parallel trend lines. Here's a trend line, parallel trend line. These are parallel trend lines parallel to this up here. The point of this exercise is you're looking for possible places of resistance. We've got these two pink trend lines relatively close to price. Notice this pink line intersects with this blue line, which is the 50-day moving average. It's not uncommon for a bear market rally to reverse at or slightly above a 50-day moving average. If you look at these blue trend lines, they come into play here. Then you've got the 200-day moving average, which currently sits at 12.83, and the 100-day moving average sits at 12.73. The point being that the market faces a lot of obstacles in this area here that would be logical points for a reversal. Worst case scenario if you're bearish, best case scenario if you're bullish, would be to get up to this trend line here, which is about 13.10. And it's conceivable that this negative trend could remain intact and you could get all the way up around 13.40. Not a, not a high probability of that. The probability is probably that this rally will reverse somewhere in this box right here either in the coming week or the following week. Last week, especially after the open on Monday, was definitely a win for the Bulls and a good week for the Bulls. However, at the close on Friday, there is some hope in the bearish camp that we're nearing, possibly nearing, the end of the current advance. This is a 60-minute chart of the NASDAQ composite. Here's the 60-minute Takeaway here is here's your cluster of activity where price could run into problems. We've gone over that on the other charts. The same concepts apply here. The point is, is we're nearing this triangular resistance area, and some of the short-term indicators are also weakening. You'll notice here on RSI on this chart, this is sloping downward and we're reaching the top of this resistance. So this is resistance, this is resistance. The PPO also closed on Friday slightly below. This is a bearish signal. You got a bearish cross here. And notice that this peak here is lower than this peak, which is a bearish divergence with price that's actually made a higher high. This histogram on the PPO also went into bearish territory on Friday. Net net bottom line, markets can advance when you see these type of weakening signals, but if they remain, it probably tells you that the NASDAQ doesn't have that much further to go before it runs into trouble. So we'll be watching these indicators early next week. This is the S&P 500. It's a daily chart as of September 16th. You've still got a 200-day moving average that's creeping lower. This is your bearish death cross relatively late in an economic cycle. What we're looking at here is the math calculation to try to determine whether this 200-day moving average is going to continue to roll over. We'd like to see it roll over if we're bearish at a steeper slope, or does it have a, a probability of turning back up, which would have bullish implications. You would think with the market bouncing from Monday, and it should be noted that Monday during the trading day, the bearish case looked like it was in great shape. By the close on Friday and after the ECB announced 
and the central bankers around the globe announced that they were going to pump more money into the financial system, this is where we are. As far as the math goes, you would think with these gains that the math for the 200-day moving average would get easier. It actually doesn't, and here's why. These have been the comparisons that we've been looking at during the past few weeks is this consolidation, which is very similar to where we are now, and this is why this is flat. What's getting ready to drop off are these figures here. So as we move forward, the comparisons become harder and harder. And thus, last week when we looked at what we might expect over the next month, last week we said that the S&P 500 would have to be above 1231 for it to have a positive impact on the 200-day moving average. That case actually gets harder this week because of what's fallen off over here. So the figure this week is 1243. And these are good numbers to know because intuitively this tells you there's resistance in these areas. So the bearish case still intact. We may get some resistance here from the 50-day and we'll cover the daily chart of the S&P 500 in a little more detail in some other slides. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 index as of a close on September 16th. Takeaway here, or takeaways plural, are relatively simple. These are moving averages. Notice how they've acted as support and resistance. They're coming up now. They're above price, so these colored lines here could act as resistance for this move. These points here are also horizontal resistance that could also stop price S&P 500 closed at 12.16. Above it, you've got 12.20, which is this point, 12.27, which is this point, and this low right here is 12.49. So these are some areas that may provide resistance or a possible reversal point for the current rally in stocks. Technology stocks have been a leader off of these lows here. So it makes sense to keep your eye on the NASDAQ as well because it's possible that the NASDAQ could break down before the S&P 500. Point here, very similar to what we just looked at. It's probable that you could see the NASDAQ move into this area. This is the 200-day moving average. The pink line is the 100-day moving average. And this is a downward sloping trend line that comes into play here. It's fairly logical to think that the current rally could reverse somewhere in this box. This is 2700. 2700 represents roughly a 3% gain from the September 16th close on the NASDAQ composite of 2622. This is an update to a table of long term sell signals that we've presented in the past. If you want more detail, Google this here and you can find other videos to kind of catch up if this is your first video. The only change is this week. With the market moving higher, we did lose a long-term sell signal on the Bollinger Bands, which we'll show you next, and dividend stocks. We'll also review that. All the other long-term sell signals remain in place, including these more important weekly signals. As we mentioned last week, the monthly signals aren't all that important until you get a monthly close. So at the end of September, the next few weeks become extremely important for the battle between the bulls and the bears. In the previous table, we showed you we lost one of the sell signals that turned neutral on the S&P 500's monthly chart. This is that signal. It's Bollinger Bands. You don't need to know anything about Bollinger Bands. We've been over this before. We'll cover it again quickly. How can Bollinger Bands help you? When price, this black line, stays in the upper band, the odds favor higher highs in stock prices. So this is what a bull market looks like. When you cross through the center line, the dotted line, and you stay in the lower band, the odds favor lower lows. This is what a bear market looks like. We were below here, which is a sell signal. Typically, when you drop below in this area, the last two times it's happened, we've moved to the lower Bollinger Band. We've moved below here. We went to the lower band. Here, the market held, and you should also notice when it held, it moved rapidly up to the upper band. So how that can help us now, we closed at 12.16 last week. This dotted line is at 
which means we're very, very close to a sell signal. If we drop at any point this week below 12.09, we'd want to close below 12.09. But from a probability perspective, here's what you have to think about. If this bounce goes to the upper band, and this tends to go to this lower blue band as it did twice, what it tells us is if we bounce here, we probably are moving to this upper blue band. This upper blue band right now sits at 1409. So you have to ask yourself, what are the odds of us moving to 1409 versus the odds of something like this happening where we break through and go to the lower band? That's right around 1,000. Given the problems that we have in the world, in Europe, that policymakers don't have many levers that they can pull anymore, we've got persistently high unemployment, we've still got technical sell signals that are, in terms of a majority, still greatly outnumbering anything that looks neutral or bullish. Given all those things, it seems pretty realistic that the probability of moving towards this lower band remains higher than moving towards this upper band. If we close below 1209, we're back on a sell signal. This is the second monthly sell signal that we lost on the S&P 500. This is a monthly chart of the DVY ETF, which is dividend stocks. Just to give you an idea of why it's neutral and how it's somewhat hanging by a thread, this, the signal is that you want this to, to roll over, and you'd also like to see price go below this moving average, which is the nine-month exponential moving average. As you can see, last week we closed at 50.73, which is this number, which means we're sitting right on the nine-month exponential moving average. The exponential moving average is flat now. If price drops below 50.73, the odds of this thing rolling over will increase, and we're very, very close to moving back to a sell signal. We did bounce here. It's possible that we could get a bounce. We have to keep an open mind about that. The purpose of showing this to you is the sell signal that we lost here has gone to neutral and it could easily move back to a sell signal in the next two or three weeks. We'll close with some bear market history. This is the S&P 500 index. This is the year 2000. This is 2001. Notice, this is a bear market counter trend rally bears don't feel good counter trend rally bears don't feel good counter trend rally sharp counter trend rally they they occur and they are sharp and they don't feel good when you're in the bearish camp however what we want to take away here is termination points typical places to look for a reversal in a bear market if we are indeed in a bear market and we'll probably find that out sometime in the next few weeks here you came down, the 100-day moving average acted as resistance here. The 100-day is the pink line. The 100-day also asked, acted as resistance here. Currently, the 100-day moving average on the S&P 500 in 2011, as of 9.18, the 100-day, which is this pink line, sits at 12.73. You can also see in a bear market that the blue line, which is the 50-day moving average, often acts as resistance. 50-day resistance, 50-day resistance. 50-day in 2011 sits at 1228. So these are figures to watch next week or in the coming week. You can also see here that in a bear market, it's not unusual for prices to exceed the blue line or the 50-day moving average. The 200-day here acted somewhat as resistance here. The 200-day that we can watch in the present day is at 1283. These are levels that change each day, but they don't change that much. And these are levels that could potentially act as resistance in September of 2011. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. 
Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.